India, a country in the South Asia. It is the second most populous country, the seventh largest country by area, and the most populous democracy in the world. It is often depicted as the fastest growing economies in the world. The poverty is on the decline in this country, with close to 44 Indians escaping extreme poverty every minute. However, the shackles of the extreme poverty has caught one by fifth of the Indian population, which has always remained a huge challenge for India. Poverty can be defined as a social phenomena in which a section of the society is unable to fulfill even its basic necessities of life. When a substantial segment of a society is deprived of the minimum level of living and continues at a bare subsistence level, that society is said to be plagued with the mass poverty. The countries of the third world exhibit invariably the existence of mass poverty. Although the pockets of the poverty exist even in the developed countries of the Europe and America. One of the true picture of the poverty can be seen in the Dharvi, that is a locality in Mumbai, Maharashtra, India. It is considered to be one of the Asia's largest slums. Dharvi has an area of just over 2.1 square kilometers and a population of about 0.7 million. With such a huge population density, the Dharvi is one of the most densely populated areas in the world. The Dharvi slum was founded in 1884 during the British colonial era and grew in part because of an expulsion of factories and residents from the peninsular city centre by the colonial government and from the migration of the poor rural Indians into the urban Mumbai. For this reason, Dharvi is currently a highly multi-religious, multi-ethnic and diverse settlement. Interestingly, Dharvi has an active informal economy in which numerous household enterprises employ many of the slums residents in the leather, textiles and pottery products. The total annual turnover has been estimated at over US $1 billion. Despite of the large sum of money have been borrowed by the Indian government in the guise of improving sanitation in Dharvi, none of these have materialized into any development on the ground. This area has severe problems with public health. she doesn't like that he roams around the whole day very
सरकार को अपना लेना पड़ता है काम छोड़ी अगर सरकार करना चाहे कर सकते हैं मगर रीजन में हम लोग की गलती है हम लोग को वहाँ कचरा इधर डस्टबिन फेंकना चाहिए बट हम लोग यहाँ पैकेट फेंक देते हैं यहाँ पे इजी है ना स्वच्छ भारत अभियान का तो कुछ मोटिव नहीं रहा क्यूँकी कोई वो सिंसियरिटी से कोई काम नहीं करता है अगर अगर हम सही रहेंगे ना तो गवर्नमेंट उसपे थोड़ा वर्क करेगी Water access drives from the public stand pipes stationed throughout the slum. Additionally, with the limited lever trees they have, they are extremely filthy and broken down to the point of being unsafe. Mahim Creek is a local river that is widely used by the local residents for urination and defecation, causing a spread of contagious diseases. The open sewers in the city drain to the creek. causing a spike in the water pollutants septic conditions and foul odors due to the air pollutants disease such as lung cancer tuberculosis and asthma are the common among resident there are government proposals in regarding to improving the tharvi sanitation issues the residents have a section where they wash their clothes in water that people defecate in This spread the amount of disease as doctors have to deal with over 4000 cases of typhoid a day. There is also an average of one toilet per 500 people. Such extreme cases of poverty in the Tharvi has always been a major concern for the developing countries like India. Economists have provided various reasons for such poverty. which can be the uncontrolled population colonial destruction of economy slow growth models geographical factors the anti poverty schemes gender discrimination the lack of education and skills and many others attempts have been made in all societies to define the poverty but all of them are conditioned by the vision of the minimum or a good life obtained in the society for instance the concept of poverty in the usa would be significantly different from india because the average person is able to afford much higher level of living in the us for instance in india the generally accepted definition of poverty emphasizes minimum level of living rather than a reasonable level of living this attitude is born out of a realization that it would not be possible to provide even a minimum quantum of basic needs for some decades and therefore to talk about a reasonable level of living or good life may appear to be a wishful thinking at the present stage thus in india the absolute standard of poverty is expressed in terms of minimum requirement of cereals pulses milk vegetable butter or calorie intake is conditioned by the relative levels of the living prevalent in the country the deprivation of a significant section of a society of minimum basic needs in the face of a luxurious life for the elite classes makes poverty more glaring Whereas the relative poverty in India is studied where the income distribution of the top 5 to 10% is compared with the bottom 5 to 10% of the population even in the affluent societies such pockets of poverty exist but for the underdeveloped countries it is the existence of the mass poverty that is a cause of concern Several economists and organizations have conducted studies on the extent of poverty in India. Some of them like the Ojha's estimate of poverty, Dandekar and the Rath study of poverty in India, Minha's study of rural poor, Bardhan's study of rural poor, Montek Aluwalia's study of the rural poverty 1977, Planning Commission Expert Group Report 1993. and many others if we look from the high level about these various reports the bs minhas has indicated that the percentage of the rural poor has declined during the period of 1956 to 1967 on the other hand 
the Oja and the Pranab Pardhan indicated that the increasing proportion of the rural poor has been witnessed. In their view, the direction of the change indicates a trend of growing pauperization. Veras Montek Singh Aluvalia believes that the Indian experience over the past two decades does not indicate the trend increase in the poverty. In general, a pattern of fluctuation is seen with the incidence of the rural poverty falling in the period of a good agricultural performance and rising in the period of the poor performance. Economists may have the differences in methodology and thus their estimates may vary in magnitude. But there is general consensus on two things. First, the percentage of population below the poverty line has started declining as a consequence of the indirect benefit of higher growth rate and also as a result of the impact of the direct programs of poverty elevation. Still the proportion of the population below the poverty line is about 37% as per the 7th plan which can be considered to be too high. Secondly, the absolute number of the poor has certainly increased over the years. The principal elements of the situation are the major chunk of the poor reside in the rural areas. Among them, two principal categories, the small farmers and the landless laborers. A little less than half of the rural poor are landless laborers and a little more than that are small and the marginal farmers. The two categories overlap since small farmers also work as agricultural laborers. Second, the major economic problem of the weaker sections in the rural India is not open unemployment but low productivity employment. Moreover, in the urban areas, the problem of the poverty is an overflow of rural poverty. Most of the poor are either self-employed or are working in the non-organized manufacturing or service sectors of the economy. The question that is relevant here is of the low paid job in case of the wage employment or low resource base in case of the self-employed. Economists can conduct an unending debate on the correctness of one estimate over the other. But judged by any reasonable standards, the extent of abject poverty in rural India is alarmingly massive. The precise estimate whether it is two-fifth or one half of the rural people who are beset with crushing poverty today is a terribly academic matter. A far more important and the practical need today is to focus policy analysis on concrete measures for the benefit of the poor, particularly in the rural poor, who are the more numerous but fail to catch as much attention as the urban poor. The World Bank report has calculated the incidence of poverty among the different categories of the rural households. It was revealed that the person in the wage-dependent families, including those working in the non-agricultural jobs, comprises 46% of the poor in rural areas. For agricultural labourers households, 64% were below poverty line. Self-employed households constituted the other large block of the rural poor. Nearly 38% of the total poor were accounted for by the self-employed households. Two factors account for this high incidence of the poverty among the rural labor households. Firstly, there is a considerable degree of unemployment and underemployment among rural laborers. It has been established that the incidence of unemployment is the highest among casual laborers. Even during the periods of employment, their weak bargaining power results in the low wages being paid to them. The market forces are so strong that the minimum wage legislation is observed more in breach than in compliance. Another major cause of the rural poverty is the low asset base of the poor. As per the report of the RBI, 27% of the rural households 
owns an asset worth less than 20,000 rupees and 23.8% of the households owns an asset ranging from 20 to 50,000 rupees. In other words, nearly 51% of the households owned only 10% of the assets. The situation becomes more grim when we see that the 14% of the top households owns asset worth equivalent to the 66% from the bottom. It is really distressing that the urban areas which are considered to be the forerunners of development indicate such sharp inequality in asset distribution. It is quite probable that on account of lack of employment opportunities, the rural poor are shifting to the urban areas in search of livelihood and thus swelling the rank of the poor assetless households. It may be mentioned that the large proportion of the rural poor remain in poverty not only because they have a very few assets but also because most of these assets are in the form of the durable consumer goods rather than such assets as land, farm implements, livestock which increases their productive capacity. Another major cause of the poverty is increase in the poverty ratio. Himachal Pradesh, Haryana, Bihar are among the major states in this group. However, the entire northeastern region, with the exception of Mizoram, Manipur, Meghalaya, Sikkim, Nagaland, Assam, Tripura, and Arunachal Pradesh, experienced increase in the poverty ranging from 0.6 to 0.9 percent per annum. Obviously, these underlines the need for promoting growth of the northeastern regions if insurgency and the terrorism have to be seriously controlled. States which have shown better record of the poverty reductions are West Bengal, Gujarat, Kerala, Karnataka, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu and Odisha. Though some of these exhibit high proportion of population below poverty, more than 40%. A very disturbing feature of the poverty scenario is that a seven major states that is Maharashtra, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, West Bengal, Tamil Nadu, Bihar and Odisha. High concentration of extreme poor people can be witnessed in these states. In the eighth five-year plan, when the Rao Manmohan model of the growth was first time laid forward as an indicative plan, the essence of the new industrial policies of the 1991 was laid forward which is most commonly called as an LPG reforms, liberalization, privatization, and globalization. The model of growth has surely solved many crises looming around India at that time. However, the pattern of growth also affected the geographical distribution. It has increased the unemployment, more regional imbalances were seen, and more cases of the malnutrition, jobless growth, regional economic imbalances, food grain security has been witnessed. This is reflected in the diverse performance of the states in poverty reduction and hence in the overall national performance. Policies of the globalization have helped the already industrialized states much more as compared with the less industrialized states and their neglect of the agriculture has been responsible for the skewed pattern of the distribution in the post-reform period. India has took many steps in order to eradicate poverty, few of them like the socio-economic planning, leaning heavily towards the welfare state, for example the Food Security Act of 2013, moreover the energy security through schemes like Sobhagya, Ujwala and many others. Moreover, India follows a progressive taxation, which means taxing more those who have higher income than a threshold set for them, whereas the lower tax for those who have a lower income. Moreover, the social safety net, like the National Social Assistance Program, is also there. The anti-poverty programs like Prime Minister Awas Yojana and the Deen Dayal Antayodhya Yojana has played a great role. 
Moreover, the massive social sector expenditure for the skill building, panchayat raj institutions, and nagar palika as a decentralization plays a crucial role in order to eradicate poverty in India. So the conclusion emerges from the analysis of the poverty line. Firstly, the procedure of upgrading the poverty line on the basis of price index needs a review and this should be accompanied by the norm of the calorie intake. Secondly, the basis of poverty line was decided four decades ago in 1969. For a developing economy with an aspiration of becoming a super economic power by 2020, it is all the more necessary to develop a basic needs approach poverty line instead of unidimensional poverty line based on the calorie intake of food primarily which is only a starvation line. This will entail greater effort on the part of the state to take steps so that the benefits of the rapid economic growth reach to the arm army that is a common man. Then it will shake us out of our complacency about the poverty in India. We have miles to go before we sleep. <laughs>